So welcome to this talk about uh, Korean systems. I'm Javier Jimenez Show. I'm a project contributor, civil engineer and software developer, and I'm currently working at Pix4D as the technical coordinator of the spatial reference systems. And you can find out more information about me on my GitHub profile. I'm sure you can dig a bit more. So what are we going to see here today? Uh, first, why do we need uh, coordinate reference systems? Uh, we'll start with a geographic coordinate reference system as a model of the Earth. Uh, different projections like UTM or Lambert conform conic. Uh, then how with that we can uh, create projected coordinate reference systems. And some examples in Europe or in the US. I will talk about TOOLIKT the EPSG database and Proch open source library. So why do we need coordinate reference systems? So we want that to locate a point in the Earth in 2D. That's what I'm going to talk today mainly. 3D if you consider elevation. 4D if you consider time. <coughs> yeah, why time? Because tectonic plates are moving slowly, but they are moving. I think Europe is about two centimeters per year. Uh, thank you. Uh, Australia is up to eight or nine centimeters uh, per year. So things are moving <coughs> and we have some time to consider that. Not here. I mean, not in this presentation. Uh, but for that coordinates, we need a common reference. So if we are talking about coordinates, we have to agree, yet yeah, our reference is this. Coordinates without the reference systems are meaningless. The same way as, unit, as measurements without units are meaningless. And using the wrong coordinate reference system is very confusing. And you can have really big problems. There is an example uh, on the link. <coughs> so first, we will model the Earth. We could use a sphere. But we know that the shape of the Earth is a bit ellipsoidal, that the radius on the equator is bigger than in the poles, about 32 kilometers. <coughs> so better using an, an ellipsoid. That's that shape there or spheroid, and we are, for the users, are going to use mainly in geodetic coordinates. That's latitude and longitude, I probably know them. The graph is right, this, uh, the latitude vector is not going to the center of the Earth. But that's the coordinate system, that's an ellipsoid, but we need a well-defined reference. Ah, okay, that's easy, we just make a hole, we go to the center of the Earth, uh, no, we can do that. So what we can do is, <coughs> position some uh, stations or points on the surface of, of the Earth and try to measure the location of those points. Uh, in the past, it was done with uh, astronomy, looking at the stars and measuring the angles there. Nowadays, with uh, satellite, uh, with GNSS, and measuring or estimating the points on many uh, stations, we try to fit uh, this ellipsoid to the Earth. So that's what, uh, it's a datum that has the definition of the ellipsoid, that's just the radius and the centricity or the flattening, just two numbers, that's all. And uh, we have a name to know that we are referring to the same fitting to the Earth. Need a few more parameters like parameridian and units. Okay, now everybody uses uh, Greenwich, that's in the UK, but they are all reference systems, so they, like the French, they use Paris as their <laughs> zero uh, longitude. In Spain, it was Madrid, zero longitude. And every country has their own reference because it's absolutely arbitrary. And you can see there are three examples. There are hundreds of them of geographic coordinate reference systems. First one, WC4, you probably know it. It's a worldwide uh, reference system. It's a data ensemble, but that's a topic for a complete different talk. Not now. <laughs> uh, the next one is NAD83 2011, and it's in the USA, and it's attached to the North American tectonic plate. And it's not the same as WGS84. ETS89, it's uh, the European Terrestrial Reference System, 89, and it's attached to the European uh, tectonic plate. And for instance, the Canary Islands that are not in the U European tectonic plate cannot be in this uh, reference system. They have their own one. And there are three flavors, geographic 2D, geographic 3D, considering elevation, and geocentric. Geocentric is the typical Cartesian XYZ that's used for uh, 
almost all the mathematical operations, especially when you are running with satellites and with transformations between atoms. Uh, as I say, we are fitting the, the ellipsoid to this station we have in the surface. But depending on your uh, interest, you may want to fit the whole globe. That's the blue example there. Uh, but maybe you are interested only on your country, on your small area, and then you can fit the ellipsoid in a different way that fits better. But obviously it's not working far away from that. So if you are using the Swiss uh, datum that's designed to work in Switzerland, it's not going to work in South Africa. And uh, many geographic coordinate reference systems, they use the same ellipsoid. Ellipsoid is just the radius and the eccentricity, or the other uh, axis. There are many ways to find that. And this example here is the Swiss uh, reference system, the Dutch and the German, the old German. And all of them use Bessel 1841. That's the definition with these two numbers, but they fit this uh, datum, this ellipsoid, in a different way because one wanted to fit in Switzerland, the other in uh, Germany and the other in uh, the Netherlands. For instance, in Switzerland, they fit to the surface of Switzerland. That's quite high compared with Germany. <coughs> okay, so we have our ellipsoid, but we would like to represent our data in a flat surface, like a screen <laughs> or a map. Uh, but it's impossible to show a spherical surface in a flat plane without distortion. There's always going to be distortion. There's no way to avoid that. We have to choose which distortion we want to have. And there are three main families. There are other cases, but these are the big three. Uh, cylindrical, conical, and planar. I think the examples are easy to understand. The cylindrical is tangent on one point, in one line, sorry. Uh, can be the equator or a uh, meridian, or sometimes something uh, different because it's an oblique projection. The conical, okay, it's clear, can be tangent something second, so there are two uh, parallel lines in the definition of the um, conical one and planar. And some projections uh, may conserve areas, so you know that in different places the area is constant, for the same surface on the Earth, uh, may keep local angles, that's called conformal, or may keep distances, but you cannot keep all of them in the whole map. Oh, distances is only from one or two points. But. And in the league you have a list of projections, that thousands of projections there. And this is just an example of six of them. And I added here just to show how there are different distortions, how the wall looks like very different, and how they are from different ages, times. So Mercator is from the 16th century, uh, Lambert Coponic is a bit later, and they are even from the 20th century. Uh, look at the plat carré, that probably is simil uh, sounds familiar to you. I was mentioned that some projections keep angles, and that's really an important feature. In the example, you can see a neighborhood in Montevideo, and as you can guess, those blocks are perfect squares. The angles are 90 degrees, and the sides, both sides of the block are the same size. And on the right-hand side, that's a Mercator projection, you see how they are uh, red angles. On the left-hand side, that's on they are not uh, right angles. This distortion is because of the plat carré projection, that's the uh, default Q QAS projection, and it's not conformal. <coughs> so if we care about that, for instance, for surveying, uh, that's an important feature. So I think all the coordinate systems, the reference systems I've seen uh, for surveying, they are uh, conformal. Otherwise, the distortion is different in different directions. That's a mess for that purpose. And now I'm going to talk about a few examples of different projections, so you get a bit of a feeling how they work. This is the first one, a rectangular projection. And probably the image 
sounds familiar to you because the one used in QES, this projection, when you project, when you use a geographic system. So 4326, the typical geographic system with latitude and longitude, when you display on the screen, hey, this 4326 is not a projected reference system. It's a geographic one. So QES is just applying a projection, that's that one. Uh, the formulas there are for the sphere, for the ellipse that are much more complicated, and you see how you go from x, y, that's linear units, whatever, mid features or whatever other random <laughs> unit, but linear, uh, from lat long and the other way around. It's pretty simple, but if you take some default values to zero or one, it's even simpler. So on the x, you have the longitude, and the y, you have the latitude, and that's all. This projection uh, doesn't keep areas and doesn't keep angles, so it's easy but has some problems. Uh, and this is the Tissot indicatrix. This is a graphic tool or index to show how the distortion is going on. And as you see there, all those ellipses are the same circle on the surface of the Earth, with the same radius, and they are all circles. And you see, when you go far away from the equator, it becomes more and more elliptic. So that means that uh, it's not conformal, it's not keeping angles, because the distortion is not the same in both directions. And also, the area is bigger, so it's not keeping areas. <coughs> we'll see uh, a descending catrix for another projection later. <coughs> now I'm going to talk about Mercator projection was invented in the 16th century by Gerardus Mercator. And his idea was to have a projection where a straight line in the map was a luxodromic curve. A luxodromic curve is a curve that keeps constant angle with the north. So the idea is, okay, you want to cross the Atlantic, you go from here to there, and you uh, draw a straight line in the map, you measure the angle, and you say to a sailor, 30 degrees north, please. And then you can cross the Atlantic with just one rump was very convenient for navigation. And it was his only purpose. It is conformal, so it keeps angles, <coughs> uh, but has some other problems, of course. Every projection has problems. Uh, it is infinity. <coughs> it's infinite, sorry. The North and South Pole are infinite. You cannot go there in the projections. You, in the map, will be quite big. Um, the up. The y direction in the, in the map, in the projection, is always pointing north. And it's not always the same on every projection. We'll see in the trans Mercator how up in the, in the map is not necessarily pointing to the north. And yeah, it's not like, okay, it's how to represent that or what's happening in the projection is like inflating uh, the globe inside a cylinder. This is a GOT, it is an animated uh, GIF, but obviously in PDF, you don't see it. And this is the, what Mercator did, the first realization uh, manually. The mathematical development was done <coughs> almost a century later. This is uh, the Tissot indicatrix of that. You see all circles, no ellipses, but bigger and bigger, not keeping areas. Okay, but we know that near the equator was working pretty well. Cool. So try to keep that advantage somehow. And this is transfer Mercator projection. So it's just rotating the cylinder as tangent on the meridian, not on the equator. And we'll keep a small zone uh, around this tangent line. As you see there, uh, north is not up in every point on the projection. <coughs> UTM is... Uh, specific parameterization of trans Mercator. So they said, okay, you can define a trans Mercator anywhere with any longitude, but okay, let's define uh, 60 zones with uh, well-defined parameters. And we can just refer to the UTM zone. So uh, Berlin is UTM uh, 32, for instance. They are six degrees wide, obviously, and they are perfectly defined. But UTM is a projection. It's not a reference system. So you can apply UTM on top of WS34, or you can apply UTM on top of any DOT3, or over on top of ATS89, or many others. So if you use UTM, it's not a complete definition. You need to define the geographic one. Lambert conformal conic is a similar 
idea, but with a cone that has uh, two standard parallels, or one, depends on how you define it, and it's good for uh, maps going east to west. Uh, UTM, or Trans Mercator, <laughs> it's good for maps going north, north south because it's how the tangent line uh, goes. So, uh, it has a small uh, distance distortion, and it was really interesting for aviation because a uh, straight line, a um, great circle, is a straight, almost a straight line in comparison with the other one that was for navigation. Okay, so we have three examples or yeah, of all of uh, projections. We can get a geographic system, we can project it, and then we have a projected coordinate reference system. I didn't say before enough, probably, that there are several geographic reference systems. So WC34 is not the only one. There are many others. If you hear latitude and longitude, please ask for on which reference system. Uh, and the way to name the projected reference systems are this uh, geographic slash, this is an EPSD, uh, projection zone or the name of the area and yeah. And these are two examples. Uh, one is in the US. You see how each state's divided in smaller areas because to reduce the distortion, the nearer you are to the center of the projection, the less distortion you have. And you see the one going east-west are uh, Lamarco from Aconic, like California, north-south, like Arizona, are uh, Trash Mercator. In Europe, different countries, different projections, but most, almost all of them are using the same geographic coordinate reference system, e 39 nowadays. I've been talking about EPSG column number, what's that? I have many examples. It's the European Petroleum Survey Group, and you say petroleum, why petroleum here? Don't focus on that, focus on survey. So it's a database or parameter data set with a bunch of definitions of coordinate reference systems and all the parameters inside and the transformations to go from one to another. Uh, it's public, that's the proper location, not epsd.io. Here is the official one. And uh, there are literally thousands of coordinate reference systems there. And in the example, the screen there are on the left hand side, all are geographic. And like the last one I added, the Kosovan. And on the right hand side are the projected ones. <coughs> Hi, Javier. But I've seen at the office that we're using a coordinate reference system that's not EPSG colon number, it's a longer text. Yeah, that's probably a well-known text, a WKT a representation of this coordinate reference system. There are WKT for other things, like geometries, and you know about that. Uh, but I'm focusing on uh, CRS. So there are two versions, one and two. Two is much more flexible, has more options, and it's also much more robust. And I hope it's the future. And OK, if you have problems with the access ordering, it is a mess. <laughs> Have fun with it. WKT2 is supporting it properly, one not completely. Let me show you some examples. <clears throat> this is a geographic coordinate reference system, it is 89. You see the definition of the datum with an asteroid. Just two numbers, per meridian, unit, and the number. Not much needed. Those are projected systems. And as you see, uh, the first thing is the geographic system. WCT4 or any DAT3, and the parameters of the projection, and at the end, the ID of the reference system. Every projected coordinate reference system has inside a geographic, the definition. So you are projecting on a geographic reference system. And don't assume that's whatever. <laughs> you have to know it. And this is an example of WKT2, much more evolves, but the same idea. Here has a proper. Uh, uh, support for the axis ordering. And finally, a few words about Proch. Uh, it's an open source library that deals uh, with uh, transformation and use spatial coordinates, everything related with CRS. It's used by GDAL and therefore by any uh, other software that's using uh, GDAL, like QES. If you don't want to deal with the C++, C++ uh, API, that's the native API, there's Python bindings in PyProch, I think more other bindings and for two other languages. <coughs> there was a big change in Proch 6, so if you're still in Proch 4, maybe it's a good time to update. 
and there are a few examples of uh, common line applications included with the library, like CS to CS to do conversions from one coding system to another, ProchInfo to get information from a coding reference system. Uh, with Proch, you can get the distortion factors. So if you're really interested in how much is distorting your projection, and a bunch of uh, grid files. I have, not talken, I have not talked about grid files, like geoid models, but there are a lot in this project there. Thank you.